Anyway, so uh, warm up 46. Uh, once again, I'm uh, starting the recording again. I don't know what happened. Somehow it stopped and then it wanted to save. The, anyway, so warm up number 46, finding standard deviation and bell curve. So, uh, standard deviation, uh, share with your neighbor so I can call on someone, please. See what they got. All right, let's see. How about someone we haven't called in a while? Pedro, go. Standard deviation. 18.95. Let's see, 18.95. Hands, have you got that? Yeah, okay. Uh, variance. Yeah, pick some. Zach, variance. Three fifty nine point three three. Hands if you got something like that. Looks about right. Okay. And some ugly uh all right, there it is. All right, and all bell, bell curves should look something like this. Pass someone, Zach. Uh Andrew me. Thirty. Hands if you got that. All right, so that means our first standard deviation uh, should be at 48.95 and 11.15. Yes, that's our average range. Yes, no, I made a mistake. 11.05. Yeah, I did that on purpose to see if you were paying attention. Pretty good, right? All right, now. Um, we're going to be addressing the uh, normal curve or normal bell curve pretty soon, or the uh, standard bell curve. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to closing this chapter, and the last portion we're going to cover is uh, data measured by position. Okay? So uh, just keep that in mind because uh, hopefully you remember how many, uh, per, uh, what's the percent in the uh, first standard deviation and what's the percent on the second standard deviation. I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah, you're, you're pretty good at that. All right. Copy, <laughs> copy the agenda for today. Warm up number 46. Measures of variation. Your home plate tonight is only uh, numbers 27, 29, and 30 of page 145. Only three problems. And uh, bless you. Bless you. And yes, today we're adding one more formula to our tool bag since, you know, we need more. <laughs> right, right? Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Say that again. You gave me index here. All right. We good? So uh, hopefully uh, your weekend went well. There wasn't any home play. I gave you a break. Yes. Uh, how was a cattle call? Some of you? Yeah. Good. And uh, once again, uh, home play page 145. All right. Got a Cornell note ready. I can summarize the data and compute the measure of variation. We're still on the same. And hopefully by tomorrow we'll be done with this part of the uh, measures of variation and moving on to measures of position. Okay. Yes, Mr. Q. All right, good. All right.
All right. So with that said, uh, we already know what the measured variation are. Yes. One more time. Tell your neighbor. There's three of them really quick. Yeah, range, standard deviation, and variance. Yes? All right. And uh, here they are again, once again, for the uh, data measures. We've covered central tendency, which is mean, median, mode. Yes? We've covered variation pretty much uh, a lot. Yes? Range, variance, and standard deviation. And we're headed towards position. Almost there. Okay? And here's some of the formulas. <laughs> Looks good, right? I left it. I left it up there. Uh, on, I think it was Friday, and my other two students were like, "What in the world is that?" And uh, so, yeah, um, those are <coughs> formulas that we've been covering. It's missing. I think it's missing one. I think it's missing two formulas in there in regards to the mid. Uh, I mean, finding the uh, the standard deviation of of group data that has classes boundaries, right? And then we need to find the midpoint and such. It's missing two of them. But anyways, uh, you, you're, you guys are experts at it, right? All right, so write this down, please. Today we're talking about coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation. A coefficient of variation is a statistic that allows us to compare standard deviation when the units are different. Once again, coefficient of variation is a statistic that allows you to compare standard deviation when the units are different. And of course, we need a formula. <laughs> and it looks like this and this. Copy those. Just add to our tool, tool belt, tool box, tool page. And tell your neighbor what the first one is for and what the second one is for, just to make sure that they understand what they're looking at. <laughs> By now, you guys should know. If you don't know, I'm going to send uh, Jet to slap people around. My goodness. Yeah, so the first one with a little S is for what, everyone? Sample S. <laughs> wow. S for sample. And the second one for population, yes. And uh, and once again, uh, tell each uh, uh, tell your neighbor each component what each one is on um, that fraction and this fraction. What each component is corresponds to. All right, very good. It's standard deviation of the sample and the mean of the sample, yes? Yeah. And over here, standard deviation of the population and the mean of the population, yes? So keep these in mind, we're gonna use those, and specifically for this next problem, we're gonna use the one for the sample. So keep that in mind, yes? All right, y'all ready? All right, example Q, and then read, write this down. The mean of the number of sales of cars over a three-month period is 87, and the standard deviation is 5. The mean of commissions is 5,225, and the standard deviation is 773. Compare the variations of the two. Copy that. I'll give you some time, and then we'll get started. So first things first, whenever you get to these problems, and we're about to start comparing two different uh, uh, Datas and that they have two unit, two different units of measure. Uh, I recommend you label uh, your stuff so like that you can get started. So let's start with uh, the information. It says the mean of the number of sales of cars over a three month period is what? 80 cents. So we label that x bar. And the standard deviation is what? Five. So we label that s. Continue, the mean of the commissions is 5,225, again, X bar, and the standard deviation is 
773. Compare the variations of the two. All right. So first things first, let's write our C bar. C bar. Coefficients of variations formula. All right. You can see, write it out since you already memorized it by now. All right, so it's what? S over X bar times 100. That is correct. So C bar blank times 100. So let's do the uh, first the, uh, the sales uh, for the three months. So we got standard deviation of 5. Yes? And then the mean is 87. All right, so use a calculator. Find me an approximate percent, please. Round to the nearest tenth. All right, I think Mel's got it. Yes. All right, Mel, go. 5 divided by 87 times 100. 5.75. All right. She rounded to the nearest 100. Okay, good. All right. Let's do the same for the second portion. C bar equals blank times 100. You set it up and find me the approximate percent. Check with the neighbor, see what they got, see if they have something similar to you. See, Lynn's got it, very good. Jess got it, very good, Jess. Samuel's got it. Is that a CI-82, Samuel? Oh, okay. All right, let's see. Cheney, what you get? 14.79%. Hands, have you got that? Yeah, you should have written, uh, what was it, 773 divided by 52.25. Now, question. It says, compare the two, but this is the question. Which one is more variable? Which means that it's going to have a wider spread on the uh, curve, and that means that there's going to be plenty of room to have different, different uh, percentages in different places. Which one has the most variable? Talk it over to your neighbor. Which, one has, which one's the most variable? Pedro's got it, very good. JC got it. Andres got it, very good. Devin, all right, Devin. Go. All right, Cheney, pass someone. Andrew, which one is the most variable? The commissions. That is correct because it's got a higher percent. This is the most variable of the two. From one to five, how comfortable are you using our C bar formula? Five, five, four, yeah, we got this, yes? All right, let's go to the next one, here we go. Example, super cute, I mean mega cute. Don't copy the problem, just write your formula. I'll go ahead and label this, let me read it out. It says, the mean of the number of pages of a sample of Women's Fitness Magazine is 132. So it says, once again, the mean for the number of pages of a sample 
of a fitness magazine is 132. So it's bar, X bar, yes? All right. And the variance is 23 Michael Jordan. So I'm going to label this what? Variance, which is S squared, yes? You're like, wait a minute, Mr. Q. This looks a little bit different, I know. The mean for the number of advertisements of a sample, again, of the Woman Fitness Magazine is 182. And the variance is, oh, sorry, wrong variance. The variance is 62. All right. Read me the formula, Zach. C bar what, without looking at your notes. Standard deviation over X bar times 100. That is correct. All right. So we need two of these, C bar and C bar. And we want to know which one is the most variable. All right. Help me set up the first one, Andrea. What goes on top? Twenty three and underneath one thirty two. Okay, she's very close. Hold on. Now check this out. Twenty three is S squared, and this one requires a what? S. So tell your neighbor what we need to do to. 23. You guys see it? Yes? So what do we do, guys? Square root. That is correct. Why? Because in order to get rid of this square and leave S by itself, to leave S by itself, we need to take the variance and do what? Square root. Square root. This cancels this. And that leaves us with S. Okay, so square root of 23 divided by 32 times 100, approximately. And help me with a second setup. Uh, Dom, go. The, the second setup? Is that it? Thank you. Yes. And find me the approximate. Yes, Maddie. And uh, who went last? Uh, Dom? Pass someone for the first one. Approximately what? Jet. Jet? <laughs> okay. Hold well, on. Let me get my handy dandy tool. Where am I at? 3.63%. Thank you. Pass someone. Once again, the first one was the number of pages, and the second one was advertisement, ads. It's going to leave it as ads, advertisement. So obviously, which one has, uh, you okay? No? Yeah. Uh, which one is the most variable? Obviously, tell your neighbor. Of course, the ad advertisement because it's got the most percent. Okay. All right. From one to five, how comfortable are you with this? All right. Five, 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 four. Okay. All right. Let's do one more. Last one. Okay. For this one, just copy the table and uh, I'll read the problem. Example, super cute. 
Column 1 says subject, math, science, social science. Second column says mean, 56, 65, and 60. And SD, or standard deviation, of 12, 14, and 10. You're all right over there, Pedro? Yeah. And it says, the mean and standard deviation of marks obtained by 40 students of a class in three subjects, uh, in three subjects of mathematics, science, and social science are given below. Which of the three subjects shows highest variation? So now we're comparing how many of them? Three. All right. So I'll give you some time. Uh, how about uh, two minutes? Yes? Yes, Mr. Q. All right. Copy it. Oh, let me get you started. Here it is. There you go. All right. All right. So uh, let's see. Who went last? Who? Aaron, pass them on. Patricia, C bar for uh, mathematics. Sorry? 21? 21.43. Hands if you got something like that. All right, pass them on. Point five four. All right. Hands if you got that. All right. Last one. Pass them on. Mel. Sixteen point sixty seven percent. And hands if you got that. Yes. All right. And obviously, just by looking at them, tell your neighbor which one has the most variance. Yes. Science. All right. So I think we got this. Yes. All right. So those of you that are following along on our uh, statistics channel, hopefully this is helping out. And like I said, I'm chunking it out, breaking it down per, uh, per type of uh, formula. So if you're in college and you're being overwhelmed, just take it one step at a time. All right? And we'll see you guys next one.